they will be talking about humor and mental health we're going to talk about the relationship between these two concepts and the uh, husband material is going to help us he's going to enhance the show for us today thank you so much so tell us husband material what makes people laugh what do you think what 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 so, do you think is that sweet spot that when you hit people always laugh? So I, I think it's, you know, human nature for people to react. So laughter can be born from or born out of excitement. I mean, some people find, some people use it as a coping mechanism when they are not even feeling, you know, um, okay about something. They just tend to laugh. And that's when you should be worried. Yeah. Because as a human, you look at it and say, ah, what is funny that this person is laughing about? But you just do not understand. Mm. So as humans, when we look at the characteristics, we, we, the ability to respond to stimuli, you know, the feeling, whether they touch you or not. Some people, when you tickle them, you can no longer <laughs> hold them, no matter how put together they are. Whether they are wearing suit or they are wearing agbada, or whether they are standing before an audience mm -hmm. or it's an annual general meeting. Once you tickle them, you don't touch it's their menu button. It's a problem. <laughs> so I think people just laugh and it's essentially you know reacting to anything that tickles their fancy yeah. for some people it is you know what they find funny for other people it is what they consider exciting for some people it's just you know to just cope with whatever situation that they are dealing yeah. with very true very true very accurate why don't you just crack our ribs a bit this yeah. morning <laughs> oh, okay. well, I, well, so yeah. this is what i think i think that a lot of um you, you know people find for people when you ask when you try to find out what they consider funny to them yeah. you, know, you have the um, for people it's personal like you have so many nigerians dealing with um you know the chaotic implementation of the naira mm -hmm. redesign policy yeah, the people casting. looking for fail people that could not get their pvc and some of them will ask you what is funny but it's actually <laughs> funny mm. it's funny because I mean, what, what, whatever you're dealing with at this time, you should let it inspire you to want to participate actively in the electioneering process. Yeah, okay. If you do not participate, you will find out what is funny in the next four years. <laughs> <laughs> when somebody else, maybe who you feel does not have the interest of Nigerians at heart, you know, presides over our administrative affairs, and then what you are dealing with today now is something that will put you in even severe problems. Okay. So I think that it is pertinent for people to just, you know, go about life and have fun, enjoy themselves. Yeah. But we live in a world where you know, there are so many sensitive people. I would say sens sensitive. You know, some people might say it's not the word, but I mean, in the past, there were certain things that you could say and everyone would say, oh, this person is joking. But now there are certain things you yeah, say and people are like, yeah. ah, ah, it ah, means, ah. That stuff means you something. Yes, exactly. something you, know, yeah. you shouldn't you know, say this, you shouldn't yes. say that. But I think it's important to note that if there are lessons that people would learn at the end, like for example, if I want to tell, you know, maybe a joke about somebody that is you know full pressed down shaking together and running over <laughs> you see i had to look for you know the right adjective because i did not want to use the f word <laughs> I and you. i don't mean the other f word <laughs> the f word that so many people run away from yeah. rather than go to the gym and run on the treadmill yeah, on they side. run away from the f word yeah. and so these people add massively you can see the goodness of god around them physically now there are certain things you would not say because you do mm. not know whether the person is dealing with a health issue yeah and so, I mean, growing up, there were people, we had all, I'm sure that anybody that attended the public um, primary and secondary school in Nigeria had a nickname. There was yes, Fatty yes, Bonbon, yes, yes, you know, yes. there was Tiri Beku, there was Lege Lege Can Destroy. <laughs> there was, you know, my, my ears used to be like the side mirror of um, a lady's bike. And so they used to call me Elephant Ear, Eti Ewuro, Eti Abiola, so many things like that. Now, growing up as a child, it was fun then. You know, but when you grow up and you are faced with so many issues, you now begin to say, will this affect the person psychologically? So, I mean, there's a lot to learn about people who tell jokes to entertain the audience, to know that you have to be sensitive. The one when we say, you know, say, you know, go respect anybody's feelings. The person when get feeling, no go come that kind of place. Because, you know, say, you go talk, um, I mean, we talk about sarcasm. Yeah. We talk about how people, you know, just in order to walk the crowd or walk the audience, somebody you don't know, you just look at them and form an opinion mm -hmm. and express yourself. Mm -hmm. For some people who don't like that, they would not want to go to such events. Yeah. But if you can handle anything, go. 
Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you so much. Just brings me to the four categories of humor. Mm. So as mental health professionals, we can cat- um, divide humor, categorize humor into four categories. So you had initially talked about what we call the affiliative type of humor, okay. which I would say helps a lot of Nigerians cope. We, cool. say we describe Nigerians as suffering and smiling. Yeah. Because when there's a problem, we automatically look for a meme to you know yes. cope with that issue yes. so when the fuel scarcity or whatever we've created memes everybody's watching everybody's laughing you know that's what we call the affiliative type of type of humor and you also talked about the aggressive type of humor as yeah. well that's when you look at someone and we call it yapping yapping yeah, someone yeah, yeah. Yeah. you look out for something in that person and you yap the person but Big that head. that thing can have a psychological <laughs> effect on that person like you had said earlier on mm-hmm. that person might laugh in that moment but go back and think about it as ah, my head is really very very and, big. And but but sink into some, some kind of there's some very serious stuff. So for example, husband material now he's single, and I can say husband material. Why are you single with such a name? Is that, is that yapping? No, no, but you know yapping now. You no, remember yapping? can be offended. Oh yeah. God! Oh God! This! Oh God! That! <laughs> oh God! <laughs> this! Something <laughs> like you're yeah, always hitting at that thing that might yeah. be the person's weak spot or true, something like that. You know that person's weak spot, but you keep teasing or hitting at that particular Very thing. True. So different. But there's a thin line between when people say, oh, you shouldn't talk about this, you shouldn't talk. Because even now, they are saying you can't ask somebody why are you single for too long, that you're pr- putting pressure on them. Yes. Mm. You know. Yes. So you'll know that person. You will know there are some ladies like that. You will see mm. that they are very... No, as, as, when you as, get to that topic, I, they are very... I think, I think aside from that, we should also be aware of the situation. Like, for example, if you come to a comedy event... Where you have a stand-up comic who is supposed to entertain the crowd you know why you're there you mm-hmm. understand mm-hmm. so and like i said i mean we live in sensitive times whether you like it or not you know you have to respect and you know virtually you know people talk about their mental health you might not see you might not understand but it is the person that is going through that situation that will be mm-hmm. able to tell you what they're going through so i think that there are a and i mean when people begin to complain you can get creative that's that's the that's the beauty of creativity you have a wealth of um ideas, or, yes, of ideas to pick from yeah. and understand that okay i understand but remember like i said if we all think about the very essence and the essence is good you want to entertain people and make them laugh take their minds away from the pressures sure, that they are yeah, dealing with yeah. But even at that, if there are lessons that they can take away from, you know, that interesting set that you put together. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot. Yes. We can talk about politics and, you know, you tell jokes that are funny about people spending the night at ATM queues. People fighting to withdraw from their own small money. Mm. We know it's small money, but it's Mm. your money, but you're fighting with somebody else to get your own money. Yes. People leave home without seeing their children. Yeah. And they go to um, petrol stations. They spend hours. When they come back home, their children are calling their uncle Mm -hmm. because they cannot (laughs) wait for five years. The father leaves very early in the morning and comes back at night. He cannot place a picture to that face. Now, there are ways you tell this. Yeah. While it is the reality, then you throw in the lessons. Yeah. Yes. about why it is important that people participate actively in governance so that they can vote in the right people yeah. who are going to do well to see that they better their lives so i mean there are certain people whether you like it or not the truth is it, there are certain situations that you deal with that you can mask with you know your personal opinion but you're not entitled to the facts you're entitled to personal opinion yeah. but facts are universal truths they are yeah. sacred so yeah. for example somebody who is not living a healthy life I don't want to give any specific example now. And who says, this is who I am. This is why I am like this. But if there are ways the person can correct it so that they will feel better, the person has to. Because in the end, if you continue in that line and maybe it, it worsens, you're going to put pressure on the people who love you. Yeah, of course. You understand? Yeah. So you would be willing to take that sacrifice. And I have not seen anywhere where you try to get people to do there's no that there, i mean for example like working out if you want to get what you consider to be the perfect body or you want to live a healthy life and they say stay away from fizzy drink and um, don't eat junk do this do that it's really very difficult because you have to put your body through certain um strain but the truth is as as a human i have never seen anybody I, i've never seen any trainer saying come on go you are doing well you can do it <laughs> they will shout at you and then you put it they try to and the person is motivating you, you yeah. because yeah. he wants the best from you yeah at that time you're looking at it and you're like what is he shouting <laughs> but you'll get used to it yeah. but, but have you ever laughed at yourself of course we we encourage people to we encourage people to laugh with 
not laugh at. Yeah. But I can laugh at myself because it's myself. Yeah. You yeah. understand? It's myself. Yeah. I know my boundaries. I can deal with the situation. Yeah. I mean, I have gone to events where, for example, it is one would expect that the mood would be very sober. So, for example, maybe um, it's a celebration of life. Okay, you know, when somebody yeah. leads a good life and mm. oh, they call it celebration of life. Mm. Yes, yes. When the person, you know, has done when they say transition to glory. <laughs> yeah. But if it's not that one, so they went to a celebration so of what's life. What's the one that when they haven't done well? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, not, it's not whether they haven't done well. Maybe people don't want the person to go, go at that soon. time. Gone too soon. <laughs> yeah. You don't want the person to go at that time. Mm. And so you would expect that the mood will be different. Mm. But for example, you are celebrating an uncle who has lived over 90 years mm. his children are really very successful the mood is definitely going to be different yeah. some people would even want somebody who will come and tell jokes yeah. so that they would enjoy themselves yeah. now when you go for such events you prepare you can be part of the family and talk about the good things about that person Fantastic. you know some people might feel like ah, what is this person say but you can share your experience your personal yeah. experience that ex i have had personal experiences where so i used to be an altar boy altar server mm -hmm. you know in the church and my mom my mom gave birth to eight children only one girl so what we used to do then was inherit our clothes so if the firstborn where the chinos finished yeah. second one Guerra, <laughs> third one Guerra, i never used to get new clothes <laughs> and because of the difference in the age when the for example the trouser gets to me it is not always my size i have to maybe make amendments or use belt so, but there was this time I just wanted to be funky, and so I used the buckle and the belt holder. I did not do it properly, and I was in church. I wore my cassock, that gown. I went to lead the people that will bring, you know, um, okay. the Holy Communion. I, as I was leading them, I just noticed that, because we used to have this standing fan, these big industrial fans, I just noticed that a part of my body was very cold. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was wondering what was going on and it was not difficult for me to walk I was like I've been wearing this cassock for a long time and I used to walk through it was good. I share my trouser okay. has you know the buckle it's wow. now it to my leg it was not like I was in shackles I did not know what to do I just bent it and picked it up and people started laughing in church I felt very bad about it but later when I relate the story I just laugh about it. Yeah, yeah that's the one category. Yeah. That brings you, yes, yes. I was going to talk about self enhancing jokes. Mm -hmm. And he, you know, when he was talking, he just made me remember my father's death. You know, one of the ways we coped when we were grieving after my dad's death was to remember some of the things he did yeah. when he was alive. And he yeah. made us laugh and cope during that period. So my dad used to be like, there's a phrase he always had when someone, when he notices someone, he said, ah, that boy is bad. That boy is bad. You know, he used to say to me, <laughs> so when he passed, when we were all mourning and, and crying, we just started talking about those, yeah. his catchphrases, and he just helped us through that period. So I remember that when you talked about uh, 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 funerals and things. So self-enhancing jokes are a very, very good way to cope. You know, when we remember some past experiences, some things we've done in the past, or maybe that time when you fell into a gutter, and you make a joke yeah. about it or you remember it. <laughs> yeah. You Everybody say did. that's very okay. We have a call. We have a call. Let's pick this call and then we'll go on with that. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. This is Dr. Jeeves. Who am I speaking with? This is Mrs. Abafemi. Good morning, Mrs. Abafemi. Thanks for calling this morning. It is well. Yes, ma. How may we help this you? Uh, my friend just sent the number to me. Okay, ma. To join the program. Okay, ma. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Do you have any questions for us today, or would you like to speak with uh, husband material? Uh, or do you have any jokes for us? <laughs> 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 thank you, ma. Yes, ma. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All okay. right, people of Lagos, you can call us on zero seven zero three two two seven seven double three eight. I repeat zero seven zero three twenty two seventy seven thirty three eight. And you can reach us on zero nine zero nine triple five ten thirty nine. I repeat zero nine zero nine triple five ten thirty nine. Okay, so going back to self enhancing joke, in mental health we say that's the healthiest type of way to joke you know when you see the humor in situations so you're going through a bad time but you try to look for the good in that bad you're broke or they just fired laid you off on the job but instead of you know going into your shell or or sinking into depression you try to look for the humor 
in that situation and I laugh through it. That we say is a healthy way to cope uh, mentally. So we always encourage self-enhancing jokes. But there's one last category which we call the self-defeating type, mm. which is when you make yourself like the clown. That person that makes himself the class clown. So you fall down, you do this just to make other people laugh. Or you yap yourself just to make other people laugh. Mm -hmm. Yes, people will laugh. Everybody will know you. Like the Joker in Batman. You know, he was he was the Joker, you know. But you can even see how that act even had an effect on Heath Ledger at the end of the day. Heath Ledger was going through depression and he overdosed while on that uh uh uh, movie. So okay, that's another call. Please please hold on. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. This is Dr. Jeeps. Who am I speaking with? My name is Julius. Good morning, Julius. Thanks for calling. How may we help yeah. you? Yeah, I just love the program and uh, the beautiful name, Husband Material. <laughs> 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 I don't know what work qualifies him to be a husband because I think I'm also a husband material. Husband Material, over to you. Yeah. So yeah, so what qualifies yeah, you? It, it, it's good. It's good that uh, we make ourselves happy, we laugh, and all of that. But another thing I just want to talk about, which he mentioned, the husband that I mentioned, is um, like taking learning out of this joke, these things we are laughing over. Like now in Nigeria, the situation is so pathetic. The as you said, how to get your little money you have is a big thing. Poor queues. I've been on queue since morning. I just got for it now. And all of this. So the question is, how can we, uh, what can we learn out of this? What can we do differently? How do we uh, make sure that we put in the right people so that these things will be corrected? Because we can't continue that. We cannot um, normalize the abnormality in Nigeria now. We just to get it right this time around. And I wish the suffering we are passing through can reset our brain so that we can put in the right set of people. This is only a madman that keeps doing the same thing the same way and expect a different result. We cannot continue like this. We need to a better Nigeria. We need a better Nigeria. We need a better country. So that we will not be suffering like this before we can get poor. We cannot be, be, be doing things the same way we've been doing and expect to get a different result. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. Thank you, Mr. Julius. Thank you so Thank much. You so Thank much. you. Interesting. But you know the funny thing that what is really helping us is all these memes we watch. Very true. All these memes we watch. Very true. You come back after your after queuing, but you pick up your WhatsApp and there's something to make you laugh. And Very it's just true. Yeah. So this is what I think. I think that you know it's also dependent on the society. If you look at our population demography, there are so many young people in Nigeria, and for these young people, you know they have their life ahead of them. They just need things that keep them going. That mm. is why I mean during the pandemic. The pandemic ushered in. We have another call. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Law uh, FM. Good morning. My name is uh, sorry. My name is um, Sylvester, aka Deputy Husband Material. Correct. Uh, <laughs> good morning, Sylvester. This is Doctor Jeeves. Doctor Jeeves. See morning. the problem. The thing is. The thing is. In this, I don't Hello. know what what. I can. I can hear okay, me. Yeah, we can hear you. So what kind of humor can we call this um, Nigerian situation? That's just the question I want to ask. <laughs> it's a dangerous humor. So 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 so, 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 so there, is, there is what there's what you call political satire. Yeah. So in political satire you discuss social issues and social political economic issues as they affect the people. That's when for example, I don't know if you have seen you know comedy videos of people who maybe they act like some, there's a guy who busy mouth a comedian who does the the character of a leading presidential candidate there's another one who does have a know, call sorry to interrupt you have a call good morning good morning good morning, good morning dr james good morning my name is uh IGB good morning man i just want to comment what you are doing you people are doing a great job thank you so much Keep it up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Well done. You're welcome. Thank you. So I was going to say that, you know, through political satire, okay, I I mentioned Busy Mouth, who portrays the character of one of the leading presidential candidates. There's also, you know, Irene Zebaba, who does, who portrays the character of the governor of There's another call. There's another call. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Good morning. Good morning, Dr. Yu. Good morning. I was found my tail in money. Morning. This is Alfred. Alfred. Me, I'm not all that. Like, I'm a boyfriend, my tail. Ah, 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 wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, uh, me, I want to commend you people. In fact, we need this kind of people at this particular time in this country now. And the most interesting part of it is this. In fact, the, is, the comedy industry is, is the only thing now pushing the country forward. Now, mm. it's making, let me say, it's just the only part of the country that is making this country feel better. If not, everywhere is just from the continent. But the comedy industry, these people are doing great. And in fact, if we told you people, everybody would have gone crazy in this country. Very true. Thank God, thank God, you are here. Very true. You guys are helping our mental health. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And the most, the most interesting part of it, in fact, there are some of these comedians now that are using their platform to even open our eyes, even educate orient, uh, oriented us more. And I like that. I believe everybody will be able to. So are using their platforms to um, tell us what is happening in the country, in the form of jokes. And then that is very interesting. And we learn lessons from there. And then I believe from there we can make sure. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. And speaking on a serious note, it even shows a need for investment in the industry. Entertainment because, industry, Because, yes, true. because without you guys, I wonder how we would have made it through. It's not just about, you know, people who do comedy. I mean, on Sunday, um, Thames became um, a Grammy yeah. Award winner. Yeah. I mean, people saw videos of the, the party and saw how these big names, you know, people who are considered yeah. to be global stars were falling over her. Wow. One popular DJ even said he would like, he's looking forward to, you know, do to a, do a, collaboration. a collaboration with her. A popular rapper made a video. He said this was like an SOS that anybody that knows her should get her on the phone. He wants to work with her. Now, there are so many young people who are looking inwards now because of their talent yeah. and they are reaching out and making Nigeria proud. Mm. I mean, I can count on my fingers how many politicians in Nigeria today are more popular than Bonaboy. Are more popular than Davido, Whiskey, Tiwa Savage. And that's the truth. When we talk about popularity, we're talking about a name that rings a bell. When somebody, I mean, you, you go to, there was, I think sometime early this year, or was it last year? Early this year, there was a concert in the Caribbean islands where people stayed up all night just to see Bonaboy. Um, Whiskey is going to sell out a stadium in the coming months. People are anticipating, people are going on social media saying, Davido, we miss you, come. <laughs> this is not the person who you elected to provide security, um, improve the economy. But people are saying, please come, because he gives them, there's this feeling of, there's this feeling of satisfaction that you get from people who you love. So there are young Nigerians doing absolutely amazing work. And I believe that with investment in this industry, you yeah. get a lot of people. True. Now, there are also charlatans in the business, <laughs> people who got in by chance. Who saw other people doing it that were like, ah, ah, maybe to just make people laugh, maybe to just do this, and then they get on these platforms. But there are people who are using their platforms to educate people, and most importantly, to add value to society. Yes, very All right. true. Um, Fantastic. Dr. Jibs, you yes. know, you're an employer of labor, and I'm wondering, in any of your interviews, have you ever considered sense of humor as a skill, as, or as a reason to hire someone? Oh, I think so. I think so. I've had one guy like that. He, he, he made me laugh all through the interview. I, I, I think, yeah, I think... Good one. You don't want people squeezing no. their face. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, like somebody that ate bitter at Balumo. But, but you know that an interview is not a place to... Yeah, I understand, but... you know, I'm really come curious. across as inappropriate sometimes. If, be, because yeah. in, in, in my days of hiring, I've also really considered, uh, you know, especially in a team that I know that, you know, they need someone to, mm. you know, bring light to that. The person thing. does not have to start Telling jokes, yeah. the person can have a healthy sense of humor yeah. when the pressure is high. Mm. The person can help everyone relax. Yeah, there true. are people who, when they I come into a space, said, yeah. when they come into a space, mm. they light up the room. Mm. In fact, you would know that there's, a, you would notice the difference yeah. if the person is not there. Yeah. Not the person is not necessarily a comedian or, mm. or a musician, mm. but when they come around, the way they just, you know, interact mm. with people, you would see the excitement. It's yeah. always like that. You know, that's, a good, that's a really good idea. That's a new one for me because. You could do when you hire people you could put a blend so you put yeah, a blend of the, those that have a good sense of humor with those that might not so they help lighten the mood yeah, in the workplace me i'm even looking at it from the angle of when the team lead or the boss is too result oriented you know it's just all about no but the there's number. nothing wrong to be result no that's what i'm saying so you need somebody to somebody the, exactly the in the mood. team you know? that's fantastic that's a good one that's a good one and it's the understanding that as humans we are different for some people this is who they are, mm. but it is how you ex, you, how you maximize their potential. Mm. 
mm. that would bring out the very best in them. Some might take it for granted, and you know, when like I, I know people will say, "Don't shine your teeth with them." Oh, when you begin to shine your teeth with them, that's when they will be, they will be behaving anyhow. Because some people take it for granted. Ah, my boss is too laid back. Now my organ now. All of you go laugh. All of us go laugh. But the truth is, if you can find the balance. If you find the balance, you're going to definitely get the best results. You don't want to walk into a business organization where everyone is looking like somebody died. Yeah. Come on. You know. Yeah, and when you, so I have hosted a couple of end-of-year events. That's when you know that there are so many talented people. Sometimes you hear the boss say, Ah, I did not know you have this talent. So sometimes you can tell them to pick um, names of people who are uh, management members of staff and maybe act like them. So you see the boss... You see them being vulnerable and expressive. That is how you can get the very best of people. Oh, yeah. Nobody wants to see you as somebody who is who who is like a who is like a. I mean, nobody wants to be around you if you're always too. too serious. If you are holding this life to your chest, <laughs> <laughs> you're tightening your chest about this life too much. Sometimes just let loose and enjoy yourself. That way, you would even feel better. You can help it. Definitely. Yes. Laugh, That's smile. That's a good one. That's a nice one. Thank you. Thank but, but you. But how do we now differentiate the good from the bad humor? You know, because no, so we talked about. I think we're, we're focused. We talked about self-defeating. Self-defeating mm. is a no-no, really, as much as we can. As much as you know, you have young people from time. They've always known them as the class clown. You know, but being the class clown has a, an effect on the person's mental health. True. In and we talked run. about even the, the Joker in uh, uh, Batman, his yeah. ledger, you know. As much as, yes, it was, we laughed and we, it was all funny, but everybody knows what happened to him eventually. Robbie he, Williams he was really committed depressed suicide. And, yeah. and, uh, yeah. So, yeah. self-defeating as much as we can, we don't want to put ourselves in that position because it has an effect on our mental health. Let's be more self-enhancing. Mm-hmm. So, look for the good in situations. True. You know, the memes are nice. Create the memes. Everyone laughs about it. You know, remember those times, like how I gave the example of my dad, my dad's passing. Remember those good times you had mm-hmm. and reminisce about them and laugh about them. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that keep us healthy. If those you come from the point of, skills. of you, you're, you're, you're telling these jokes to make people laugh, but in the end, you are sharing insights that can help them. Maybe in the mistake that you made in the past and you're trying to help them, I think you would feel better because in the end, it's not even about the ovations that you get or the money you make there are people who have all of the plaques in the world all the recognition but they are depressed and they are not happy yeah. mm-hmm. so if you find fulfillment mm-hmm. in the joy that the people get mm-hmm. and you know that you're, you're you're building a legacy for yourself where they would remember you and say ah this person for what the person had done i think that it would help you yeah. find satisfaction in all yeah. that you yeah. do but what's your advice for comedians really because we don't want any of them to you know make us happy and you know leave it oh comedian you know comedians are the funny guys you know we always see them they're always cracking jokes they make us laugh but i want also want them to prioritize their mental health as well you know there's this tendency or if you have that friend that always makes every everybody laugh we feel that because he makes us laugh we feel like everything is perfect let's also reach out to our friends our funny friends uh, it's always important for us to know how they're doing. Let's always check up on them, you know. Because Robin Williams did make us laugh, you know. He did yeah. make us Over laugh, years. and then we found out eventually that he was going yeah. through a lot. So even if they are the funny ones, let's also reach out to them, guy. Are you sh- are you doing okay? How are you doing? You Very know, true. let's know. Don't just rely on the humor. Very true. You know, and I, th- I I think it's not just for people who tell jokes. People in the creative industry, yes. whether it's music, whether it's art, yes. anything you do that you know you bring ideas to yes. life because. Yeah. You, you virtually bring this thing out of thin air. Yeah. From the conceptualization, the idealization, yeah. then the production, and then the promotion. It's mm. a whole lot of work yeah. to think. Mm-hmm. So I think when people, load. Yes, yeah. when people understand that it is step by step, there are certain things that you should not pursue for now. Just write it down. Write it down and come back to it later when you are in the best state of health. Uh, or best state of mind. Mm. It's it's a lot better to face That's things. That's why I really move a lot of husband and stuff. This <laughs> you gonna get feeling right. the guy. He's gonna get <laughs> right. Nice nice thank you. Thank you. I'm very nice grateful. Thank really you. Let's get him to the altar. Remember, he works as an altar boy, so he needs to get back there. You know. <laughs> thank you. Nice thank one, you. Nice thank you. Um. So we we'll go on a short break now, and then we'll be back. Therapist with Dr. Jit. We'll be right back. This is Law FM 103.9. 
you won't get knowledge, you won't get wisdom. Continue to be listening to Law FM 103.9 for knowledge and entertainment. Here is an opportunity for you to find answers to all your medical related questions. Join Dr. Jibs, a legit therapist consultant, psychiatrist, and health policy expert on The Legit Therapist with Dr. Jibs of the Freudian Center every Wednesday from 10 to 10.45 a.m. on Law FM 103.9. To my favorite station, loved you yesterday, love you still, always have and always will. You bring me knowledge and entertain me. What kind of love is this? Law FM, happy Valentine's Valentine's Day to my number one station. (laughs) 103.9? Law FM. This is Law FM. 103.9. This is the Legit Therapist on Law FM 103.9. All right, people of Lagos, remember you can dial and call us into the program on 0703-2277-338 or 0909-555-1039. So where were we, Dr. Jibs? Yes, sir. Husband material. Yes. We've been cracking our ribs all this while. Thank you. I <laughs> hope we've been able to educate the public, you know, and, you know, also give them some reasons to laugh. Very know. true. I mean, no matter how difficult the situation is, um, if you can change it, why worry? Mm. If you cannot change it, why worry? <laughs> <laughs> because in the end, you're looking for solutions. Yeah. If you can, there's no point stressing yourself. If you cannot, just... You know, live your life. So, well, good well, morning. It's a call. Okay. Good morning. Good morning. This is good morning. This is Doctor Chips. Good morning. Good morning. Your name and where you calling from, please. Terry. Mazi on the line. Good okay. morning, Mazi. And I used to hear wife Matilda. I never said it. Don't go husband. That's a new one. Yes, sir. The man, the man in the studio, they're supposed to know Mazi now. Mazi, well done. I greet you, righteousness. I greet you, sir. Well done, sir. Well done, sir. Well done no, for coming on the air. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Happy, happy of Naira. Hey, now, Lagos, you're a favorite thing. A cool, a cool, a cool, a cool, a cool, a cool, a Thank you, sir. So, you know, it's so easy to make other people laugh. Mm-hmm. But now, the situation, I'm looking at the situation where is that, what if you come in at the wrong time, you know? True. So, for example, they are discussing serious matters. So, the CBN governor is seated, you know, the bank directors are seated. Uh-uh. Then, you know, uh-uh. you just come in with a very funny joke. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. So, I, I, th- I think it's important to, you know, read the room and know how to go about it. There was the bankers, um, there's something they call the bankers dinner. It's it's an evening where you play host to the central bank governor. You know, I had the privilege of participating in that, although it was for a brief period. I think it was for a 10 minutes period. Because you need this, you know, the governor has read his long speech, the CBN governor has read his long speech, this one has read their long speech, people are just looking, you know, dinner is turning to night food because <laughs> they were supposed to begin by 6, but you cannot say start when the chief celebrant or right. the host is not present you know but so you read the room and know how to you know just lighten the mood and that was about that time they launched the redesigned <laughs> the redesigned 1500 denominations you know and we made jokes about how you know f- we he said he was going to redesign and he now repented. <laughs> you know, you know, I mean, he had a good laugh too because he's human. Mm. He had a good laugh. And whether you like it or not, these people hear these things. Mm. I mean, you I, there's there's a popular um, comedian who plays the who portrays the character of President Muhammadu Buhari. He looks like him and does that. Mm. They say if you want to get the president to relax, just bring that guy. Yeah. He finds him funny. Under good luck, Jonathan. Same thing. Chief Olusegun Obasanjo 
had his favorite comedian all time, Ali Baba. And so they, they are humans too. They see all these things. You would see the vice president giving examples of some things he saw on social media. He sometimes he'll say, yeah, Oh, yeah, you yeah, are doing yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> 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 so they see this is no, the human, no, no, no. but you need to read the room. Mm. Don't go and say the one that he will laugh at, he will laugh in your presence. Then by the time you come down from the church, <laughs> somebody will just tell you, oh, Let's see you somewhere. <laughs> No, but just sincerely, um, does this come naturally? I know HR, we talk about emotional intelligence, you know, we send people for this kind of courses and all, but is there, you know, a scientific way of developing the right sense or to understand situations? To understand or to make the jokes? Which one are you asking? Uh, I think to understand, really, because um, you already have the sense of humor. That's why you want to make a joke. So, um, in terms of understanding, in mental health there are actually some conditions that if a person has they won't get the joke actually oh, okay so certain conditions like well, like autism so people with autism might not everyone might be laughing but they might not get the joke mm-hmm. okay uh, because there's there's a difficulty with abstract thinking so there's difficult for them to process what you're trying to say uh, so there's some conditions like that where individuals might not be able to get the joke but you shouldn't uh, it's not a reason to stigmatize or even if someone might be depressed they, they, let's not even go as far as autism let's go a depressed person everybody mm-hmm. might be cracking jokes but man i'm just too sad mm-hmm. to laugh right now okay. you know i'm really really down to laugh too too down to laugh so some conditions can make people not uh, laugh with you in that uh, moment mm-hmm. but that's not a reason to give up because you might just hit that sweet spot and then get them mm-hmm. to and some people just better. look around you know, in the audience and see somebody that they want to pick on. Maybe the one who is not laughing. It yeah. happens. Mm. I mean, I have seen some of the big artists do shows and they're like, you, leave, leave this place. Uh, security, take him to the back. Mm. People came here to have fun. Why are you not excited? But I think that, he, that there's, a, there's, a, there's an approach that you would adopt mm. and then you can get the person to even be more relaxed. Yes. And so, the onus is on you to understand your mm, audience and know that some people might be dealing with this situation yeah. and you can only spread kindness. See, people who don't want to laugh will not laugh. There's nothing you can do about it. If you like, talk from now to tomorrow. If the person is not in the right state of mind, and they will not laugh. Yeah. Have you True. ever met a very stubborn crowd? <laughs> yes, I have. Yes, I have. We and would not age laugh. Range. I, I, age range. No, I don't Young think, or old. I, I think... I think um, it was their condition at the time. <laughs> so they, they were, their eye was no, their eyes were, they, they could not see very well <laughs> because so many things have blind their eye. <laughs> so at that time, they did not even understand what I was saying. Mm. And so I wasn't, ex- this was years ago, I wasn't experienced enough to know that, you know, when you, when you are before this audience, this is, this is what you should do. Mm. I mean, for example, I am not going to tell certain things when I am standing before elderly people. Mm. If they don't find it relatable, it will fly over their heads. Mm. And it's not like you're not funny. Mm. It's because they cannot relate to what you're discussing. You cannot you cannot have a banker's meeting and then you start talking about uh, uh, people that sell things in Computer Village. Mm. I mean, some might get it, but they would not. Mm. So it will be easier for you to sit back and do your research and yeah. find out okay, I'm going before a corporate audience. Yeah. There's definitely HR. Mm. I am sure some people must have had experience with HR. Yeah. Where, for example, you start a letter, you start a... Um, you start an email with, I hope this meets you well. <laughs> <laughs> when you see that kind of email, the person does not care whether it meets you well or not. So long as the email meets you, and you must follow the instruction. So you prepare yourself and know. And when you say something like, for example, if I go into a market and say this, I hope this meets you well, the uh, young will be looking at me like, yeah, okay, what's well, the email? Yeah. What's the email? Yeah, and, so she doesn't understand. So you have to be sensitive and understand your audience. Yeah. And I tell people that there is humor in everything. So, there's always a prefix. For example, there is dark humor. Mm. And for dark humor, you know, you should know what you're expecting. Mm. So, just to give us a... Okay. Good morning. This is Dr. Jibs. Good morning. How are you? Who are we speaking with? I'm speaking with Mr. Abiola. Mr. Abiola. Mr. Abiola. Good morning, sir. Thank you very much. Sir, you listening to your program last Wednesday. Okay. I have a question that has come up last Wednesday. What has got the gym got to do with the health uh, medical care? Sir? Dream and nightmares. Dream and nightmares. nightmares. Dream and nightmares. Yeah. Okay, what yes. has it got to do with your mental health? 
Yes. Okay. That'll be a topic for another day, definitely. <laughs> I, I think I'll, I'll just share my number. You can call me and we can talk about it. You can reach me on okay. o, o, it's o 9 60,075. 08096075. I'll number later. Okay, we can talk about it later. All right. Okay. Osman Material, I'm very curious. Yes. So now in our search for laughter. Mm. comedy is becoming very expensive comedy shows you know mm. we understand that you know a lot is put on into you know doing hosting these events mm-hmm. you Pretty know true. um so how do the common man find laughter uh-uh. but yeah. you know that they <laughs> give us free skits online uh-huh. yes, yes. Uh-uh. go to us what's your page please uh, it's actually my real name so that in case you want to help me okay, what's your page sir? <laughs> tell I us i'll give you my, what's your my account number what's your ID, my real sir? name at ezugu chukudi e-z-u-g-w-u-u C H U K W U D. Is that your handle online? Yes, my real handle because that's the name in my bank account. <laughs> but, but <laughs> so that eh, eh, so that in case you want to help me quickly, <laughs> you will not make the mistake. And when I send you the thing, you will know this. You know, but but f- I mean, for me, it's a lot different because I have multiple personalities, and that is because of the things I do. So um, that's 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 that. Now, for some people, you know, for some people, you you. A lot goes into putting events together. Yeah. So, you know, you you have to get a venue. You have to ensure that the place is comfortable. You get security. There's also small chops and t- setting things to down. You have ushers. You bring your friends who are going to entertain. Because what you do is you understand that for some people, they have a niche audience. I mean, for example, there are c- certain people who do some sort of comedy and if you exclude those people you would not have their audience now we are we are seeing in the past it used to just be get on stage with your microphone and tell jokes now people actually dramatize on stage yeah yeah there are some people who are very good actors mm. comedy actors but they are not stand-up comedians okay. if you give them the microphone and tell them we oh, yeah, are start telling jokes it might be very difficult yeah but if it is to dramatize once they wear their outfit mm. oh alaji musa brother shaggy mm. mr yeah. macaroni mm. So then you begin to see the person like that and it's easier for them. Yeah. For some people, once they just get the microphone, it's to start telling That's jokes. True. So we have there's evolved to it, yes, yes, we have evolved to the point where there's a lot that comes to putting yes. it together. And yes. so you need a lot of money mm. to do that. And we need to encourage our yeah. audience, really. They are the mm. ones keeping us alive in this country. <laughs> we, are really, we are really trying. <laughs> there's something you said about dark humor. Yes. yes. Okay. So I said you, you have prefix. So when you say dark humor. When you go by the term dark, people already know ah, it connotes, you know, Trouble. the very yes, the and it, it, it's it's these are jokes, mm. but <laughs> it's not for everybody. <laughs> you might find some defeating, yeah. I don't know, or aggressive jokes. Yes, aggressive. Okay. You might find them, and you might consider them insensitive because they might talk about even mental health they talk about the mental in the health yeah, okay. yeah, you know yes. they will talk about health Very conditions and joke. so many yeah, you understand that's what we call okay. expensive some joke. people find it some people cannot deal mm. some say it's offensive but mm. it is still funny but the truth is you have to understand your audience and there are certain things you should not say mm, all right true. we've run out of time now oh are you serious yeah we've run out of time. oh my god can we do this again <laughs> <laughs> husband material thank you very thank much you for so coming much. on the much. show thank you i'm honored i just want to share the freudian center handle so if anyone wants to reach me after the show you can reach us on um at freudian center on instagram facebook twitter youtube and other platforms i'm at miss jeeps on all platforms as well. Husband material. I think also remember that husband material on all platforms as well. Ezugu Chukudi on all platforms. <laughs> That's my real account name. Thank you so much for tuning in. We hope to see you next Wednesday. This program is in association with the Forgin Center.